Grade 3, Distance Learning Week 7, Forces and Magnetism. Science News for Students. Animals. Electronics may confuse a bird's compass. Robins get disoriented when surrounded by the electromagnetic noise given off by some ordinary electronic devices. The magnetic sense of European robins, like the one shown here, may get confused by the electromagnetic radiation given off by electronic devices. By Stephen Owens. Birds know when it's time to migrate. They get some of that superb sense of direction from their ability to, de to detect Earth's magnetic field. That magnetic sense acts a bit like a compass used by human hikers. But the energy coming from some electronic devices can perturb a bird's internal compass. And that might confuse a bird's sense of direction, according to a new study. Most electronic devices send out waves of energy called electromagnetic radiation. The levels are too low to harm people. Any given device only sends out a small amount. But some types of this radiation could pose a problem to birds. Even when held captive in a lab, birds know when it's time to migrate. They fidget in their cages. They try to face in the direction that they would fly away, if outdoors. But the birds can't always line up correctly, notes Henri Mortensen. He's a biologist at the University of Oldenburg in Germany. He and his colleagues studied European robins, Erythacus rabicula. They took some birds outside the city of Oldenburg to a rural area with low electromagnetic noise. There, the birds had no problem figuring out which way to turn, but birds caged in the city were confused. They were likely to face in the correct direction only when they were shielded from electromagnetic radiation. Mortensen and his colleagues published their findings May 7th in Nature. Electric equipment, electronic equipment, can sometimes interfere with a magnetic compass. Scientists have long argued about whether such devices might also interfere with the biology of animals. That includes a bird's magnetic sense. Earlier studies have claimed to find such effects, but many scientists didn't accept those findings. Joseph Kershevik has called for researchers to be more careful when studying the effects of electronic devices on birds' sense of direction. As a biomagnetist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, he studies animals' magnetic sense. He says, Morton's team has done better work than any previous team in probing how electronic noise might affect birds' magnetic compass. As a result of this study, he told Science News, I think it needs to be considered seriously. I, he also said he hopes to see other scientists try to confirm the new findings by running similar tests. Mortensen's experiments began back in 2004. He observed that caged birds do not face toward their migratory directions. For several days, he couldn't figure out why. He could not figure out why. Then, another researcher in his lab suggested that they set up a shield called a Faraday cage. It consisted of rounded aluminum screens that blocked incoming electromagnetic radiation. When protected by the screening, birds in the lab at least at last faced in the direction they should migrate. Over the next few years, Mortensen and his colleagues kept testing the idea that the electromagnetic noise upsets a robin's sense of direction. They tried various ways to challenge it, yet their data always showed the same thing. The birds not only faced the right direction when the shield, the birds only faced the correct direction when the shield blocked out the electromagnetic radiation. Not all types of everyday radiation confuse the birds' sense of direction. Cell phones and power lines are often blamed for confusing birds. 
but the researchers reported they had no effect in their tests. Morton said told Science News he was reluctant to start studying birds and electromagnetic radiation. After all, he knew that previous experiments had tested its effects on animals had been cr criticized as zany or sloppy. But he says he and his students worked hard to think of different ways to test their ideas. It's not the first time it's been claimed, he said, at the link between compass confusion and electronics, but I hope it's the first time it holds up. As the workings of this puzzle started to become clearer, in 1836, English scientist Michael Faraday made a similar observation to that of Franklin. When charged, an electrical conductor, like Franklin's can or a metal cage, would display that charge only on its exterior, not on its interior. To further test his observation, Faraday conducted an experiment similar to Franklin's. Faraday lined the exterior of a room with metal foil and charged it with an electrostatic generator. He then used an electroscope, a device that detects electrical charges, in the middle of the foil-lined room. As he had predicted, the electroscope detected no electrical charge within the room. To understand how this works, one must first understand the basics of electricity and conductors. First, conductors are metal objects that have electrons, negatively charged particles, that move around them. In the absence of an electrical charge, the conductor has roughly the same number of positively charged holes and negative electrons. However, if another object with an electrical charge nears the conductor, the positive and negative components separate. If the foreign object has a negative charge, the negatively charged electrons are repelled. If the foreign object has a positive charge, the negatively charged electrons are drawn to that foreign object. This process is called electrostatic induction. With the foreign object present, the positive and negative particles end up on opposite sides of the conductor. This essentially cancels out the field of the external object's charge inside the metal conductor. Therefore, the net electric charge inside the conductive material is zero. And, despite lacking a charge inside the conductor, the opposing electric field blocks out electromagnetic radiation. The extent of this blocking out is dependent on the cage's construction, the size of its holes, its material, and so on. Imagine waking up on the beach before dawn. The glimmer of light leads you to the shoreline. Suddenly, a wave pulls you in. At first, you use the direction of the waves to guide you. But once you're in the open sea, with powerful currents bombarding you, and very little light, how can you be sure of where you are and where you're going? For a hatchling sea turtle, the answer is magnetoreception. That's the ability to sense magnetic fields. We know many animals use this sixth sense for navigation. What we don't know is exactly how magnetoreception works. Here's what we do know. Earth itself is like a giant magnet. The motion from its liquid outer core generates a magnetic field. Certain animals can sense this field and use it as a compass to tell them if they're heading in the right direction and a map to give them signposts along the way. There's two competing theories for how magnetoreception works. One is a chemical sensor, the other is, is a mechanical sensor. The first theory is that animals have tiny magnetite particles in their bodies that act as magnetic receptors. Magnetite is the most magnetic natural metal on Earth. It's been found in many animals that exhibit magnetoreception. And it's thought that it's the only potential sensor that would be sensitive enough to capture these incredibly tiny variations in magnetic field strength that would allow the animal to, to not just know whether they're going north or south along the magnetic field line, but know the precise beach that they need to get to. The other theory is that animals possess a protein in their eyes called cryptochrome, which allows them to see magnetic fields. Cryptochrome has been found in the eyes of several migratory birds, but we haven't proven either theory for a few reasons. With magnetoreception, you don't know where to look. Magnetic fields pass invisibly through the entire body, so researchers don't know exactly where these magnetite particles or cryptochromes would be attached to particular cells, I mean, so mistakes are made all the time. And so far, cryptochrome experiments have only yielded positive results, 
in the presence of magnetic fields much stronger than Earth's. The frontier is now so n not so much at the animal behavior level, but actually getting inside the brains of these animals and trying to find uh, these sensing cells and connecting them to the neural circuitry. It's not so much a question of, of which animals have this sense, but which don't. So researchers have said, well, why not humans? Maybe we had this sense at one point deep in our evolutionary past and, and lost it, but maybe there's a vestige left. Researchers in California and, and Japan have gone after this, this holy grail one more time um, with a very specialized experiment, one that relies on double blinding and uh, magnetic shielding, and they're seeing glimmers, maybe even more than glimmers, of this magnetic sense in humans. It's starting to be reproducible, and they're really excited about it.